Week three of the NFL season is over. And before we get to week four, you have to dominate your waiver wire. And looking at waivers this week, there's no doubt that the wide receiver position is where you want to be spending the majority of your budget and time. So these are the 10 wide receivers that you should be looking to add in your fantasy league before your friends do. And we'll start with maybe the most obvious one. He's the number one ad across all wide receivers this week. And that is Juwan Jennings, who we were telling you to add towards the end of last week, whether it was here on this channel, whether it was on my social channels or during our work on Yahoo. Now Jennings started this game and there was no George Kittle there was no Debo, there was no Christian McCaffrey. He ends up running 89% of the routes, so elite usage, and he turns this into a 40% target share let me give you a little bit of a thought here a 40 percent target share while playing next to brandon Ayuk is insane a 40 percent target share would rank number one amongst all wide receivers last season and then he turns this elite usage into 12 targets that was the 40 percent 175 yards three touchdowns look i was facing brandon Ayuk in the flock fantasy league we're doing like a reality tv show the league channel over there in the flock league i faced him there and as of right now as of this recording i'm still going to win somehow despite him dropping 46 points now i really want to point to this stat that i found on twitter from the 33rd team you can see right here epa per target that's expected points added per target it was 1.55 now what does that mean it literally means every time the 49ers targeted one juan jennings in week three it was worth one and a half points to their score every target he ends up ending this game by playing the most snaps running the same amount of routes as brandon Ayuk, and seeing two more targets than Ayuk, who did have a nice target share in this game i think he's a buy low candidate 10 targets in this game for Ayuk, but 12 for juan jennings and here's the thing george kittle should probably miss at least another week with a hamstring debo samuel's expected to miss more time and so is christian mccaffrey so you're going to get more of these games out of Juwan Jennings not in terms of points and uh yardage and all that but in terms of usage so so far through three games and this was also the first two games of the year he was seeing nice usage in terms of being downfield these targets just not as much because Debo is active and Kittle but fifth in yards per target on the year we're seeing some nice things right now out of one Juwan Jennings who at the end of the day Juwan Jennings last year was also productive for this team last year he played in six games where he saw at least 50 percent of the snaps and in four of those games he had at least 10 fantasy points now he'll head into this next week as a home 10 point favorite against the Patriots who I think the attention there for their wider cornerback one Christian Gonzalez will be on Brandon Ayuk maybe not going to be the best overall spot I don't even know if you can start Jawan Jennings this upcoming week which sounds crazy off of that big game but it could be a spot where Jordan Mason is seeing 24 carries and they're not passing a lot as 10 point favorites overall though you're still probably starting him could be a pickup and trade type position the next guy I want to talk about is Michael Wilson the second year player for the Arizona Cardinals who had the best game of his young career in week three and here's what he did he goes out there he has 14 fantasy points earns nine targets catches eight of them for 64 yards against the Detroit Lions who kind of have a suspect secondary at this point a lot of new investments in that secondary but a great game for Michael Wilson and here's what he did according to fantasy life in this game he runs 92% of the routes in elite role we saw him run 92% of the routes as well in week one so he's out there a lot and he sees a 28% target share a 28% target share while playing next to Marvin Harrison Jr. and Trey McBride who did get banged up but that was later on in this game is notable it's something that is noteworthy because this is something that we didn't see out of Michael Wilson last year and for part of that reason was he was kind of being operating as the number one receiver meaning that he would then see the number one cornerback on the opposite side of the game because he was competing with guys like Greg Dorch you scroll down he's competing with guys like I don't even know at that point Zach uh, Pascal wasn't even on the team it was like Greg Dorch Rondell Moore who got traded away Marquez Brown Marquez Hollywood Brown but he was hurt as well so now he has a real real number one receiver on the opposite side of him and Marvin Harrison and that's important because yeah it's going to draw some of the targets away but it's also going to draw a lot of the attention away to give you these weeks for Michael Wilson like we saw in week three now Trey McBride like I said he did get injured in this game it was a concussion it was a pretty bad concussion on average though as you can see right here according to sports md analysis on twitter a great follow if so if indeed he's placed in the protocol which is expected as i'm recording this he's expected on average to miss one game that's based on last year the concussion protocol rules basically everybody was missing a game if you were placed in it last season now, if you're not familiar with michael wilson this is a big receiver 216 pounds and i honestly think he's like one of the better or like prototypical type of number two receivers for a team he can do everything he has the size he has the speed he has the ability to win jump balls when he was coming in to the NFL last year as a third round pick he kind of fell into the draft because of medical issues but those haven't been a problem so far in his NFL career so I'm very interested in Michael Wilson this week on all waiver wires he's available in like 90 something percent of leagues and here's the thing he's going to be at home now against the Washington Commanders who have the second worst secondary in the NFL through three games only the Rams are worse this is a great spot for one Michael Wilson now you might be wondering where does he rank amongst all my other wide receivers well I just sent out my waiver wire rankings and tiers for this week where you can see exactly where he ranks compared to the other receivers and running backs this is last week's version you can see Zach Charbonnet was the number one ad here you can see some of our top wide receivers we do it for every single position I rank somewhere between 20 and 25 receivers and running backs and a bunch of tight ends and quarterbacks now how do you get this you might be asking well you can get it by signing up for my fantasy blueprint the fantasy blueprint is very simple to get you just follow these two steps they'll be linked below right here and here's the thing if you don't make the playoffs you're 
your your fantasy playoffs i'll just refund your one-time payment of ten dollars when you sign up through one of our partners now who are our partners again they'll be linked down below there are two options right here there are three simple steps and then you get your fantasy blueprint and here's the deal almost twenty thousand people currently have access to the blueprint the same tools that i use every single week for my fantasy leagues and not only do you get my waiver wire tiers and rankings you get my rest of season rankings tools for trades projections and rankings for every week game by game matchup notes discord access and a whole lot more so to get access to your risk-free fantasy blueprint with twenty thousand others right now you can scan this qr code on the screen right here or you can click the link in the description below to get all that information to smack around your league mates with now the next man i want to talk about is somebody i've been talking about for three weeks now because he finally made his debut and that's josh downs the second year player for the indianapolis Colts. he made his debut coming back from an injury that he suffered in the preseason in week three he made his debut and right away run 73 percent of the routes great to see it's not like he was limited to only 40 or 50 percent and getting ramped back up basically in every down player because he was playing out of the slot so three wide receiver sets and earns 29 percent of the targets right when he comes back now overall this didn't lead to a great game because one anthony richardson wasn't great it was a tough matchup against the bears and look they didn't throw a lot only five targets made up 30 percent of the target share 29 percent but you can see right here three catches 22 yards okay this is a start this is a start for a guy who's still not going to be a priority on the waiver wire with juan jennings out there in your leagues and this could be a guy that you can get pretty cheap because he's available in 75 percent of leagues but if you watch this video you'll know that right away he went out there and he was a starting slot receiver he played a lot more than adonai mitchell the second round pick who only ran two routes in this game played seven snaps 16 routes for josh downs compared to the starters in Pittman and alec pierce on the outside who only ran 20 routes so it was very similar to those guys and he saw the same amount of targets a team high five targets with michael Pittman. so all the usage was great for downs in this game now he played 90 percent of his snaps out of the slot that's according to Dwayne mcfrollin you can see right here via fantasy life on twitter another great follow this only led to those 5.2 fantasy points and look it's not like the offense is exciting right now anthony richardson doesn't look good jonathan taylor is running the heck out of the ball on the ground but this is still a guy in josh downs that can get you easy buckets for richardson across the middle of the field and out of the slot and this is a guy that's been great all throughout really the last three years of his career dating back to college you can see back-to-back -back thousand yard receiving seasons at unc with two different quarterbacks and multiple different offensive lines and a whole different system there and then he goes into the nfl and in his first year in the nfl he goes out there and he has like a 70 target season despite not really being a full-time player until the final nine games and i think i said 70 target season i meant a 70 reception season 68 receptions 98 targets again wasn't really a starter until midway through the season battled a little bit of an injury at times too that he played through and he played all 17 games so this is somebody that's when he's out there he is efficient he knows how to earn targets earned over 30 percent of the targets his final two years of college earned those nearly 100 targets as a rookie last year he's somebody you want on your rosters in all 12 team formats or higher another guy you want to look at in these 12 team formats is this fella right here demario douglas who is on the new england patriots and maybe after this week looks like they're number one receiver maybe you can see right here if we pull up a tweet over by jacob gibbs on twitter entering monday night football there's two games on monday night football but entering it demario douglas has a 30 eight percent target share the fourth highest actually tied for the third highest on the week right now with Deontay Johnson that's elite usage I mean look at the names he's up here with the great the greatest of all time Juwan Jennings but then other guys like Rashi Rice uh Malik Neighbors Amon Ra right Drake London I'm Aaron Cooper all these guys that we know can earn targets consistently if the mayor Douglas was able to do that it means something and he turns these targets into a pretty nice game when basically nobody on the Patriots was doing anything on Thursday Night Football in week three Douglas was he had 15 fantasy points he catches seven of nine targets for 69 yards adds a nine yard carry on the ground and he was actually a viable player now basically nobody started him if you had him he was already on your bench but he's out there right now in over 90 percent of fantasy leagues and if we pull up the usage there's not really a, a standout wide receiver on this team and that's been shown like i've been high on Jalen polk because i think he's an exciting rookie but he still just played three games in the nfl as you can see right here nine targets for one demario douglas the next closest wide receiver is polk with two so like at this point this wide receiver core is wide open but it's polk who's starting to stand out a little bit and it makes sense because look at his competition we talked about or it's douglas who's starting to stand out a little bit we talked about polk right there kj osborne has been like a journeyman third uh, really just on the vikings and now the patriots but he's kind of been just his third option at best in an offense tyquan thornton got hype in the preseason but the smaller speedster on the outside hasn't really done nothing so far this year and then you got guys like kendrick Bourne over here he's been dealing with injury he's on the pup list there's not really anybody here i think it's Jalen polk and then outside of that demario douglas who douglas has proven to be able to earn targets his last year's a rookie and dating back to college you can see right here his final year of college again it was at a small school in liberty but he did earn 30 percent of the targets anything above 24 percent is great anything above 28 to 30 percent is elite in college and then last year in his rookie season in the nfl he goes out there earns 78 targets across just 14 games really doesn't start getting going until the final 10 to 12 games so he's going out there and earning six to eight targets a week as a rookie a six round rookie out of a small school in liberty playing with a terrible offense last season in new england so this is something that is encouraging to seeing that in week three in a tough matchup against the jets on a short week thursday night he was able to put up some production and speaking of that matchup against the jets on thursday night the guy on the other side of the field that's
that's interesting here is Mike Williams because he's available in over 80% of leagues and he might be starting to finally get going because Mike Williams has had a slow start to the season, but honestly, it's because this was the plan. They said they were going to ramp him up slowly over the first four weeks. So in week one, coming off of his torn ACL, he runs just 19% of the routes, sees 0% of the targets. Then you go to week two. If we pull it up here on Fantasy Life, he runs 73% of the routes, sees 4% of the targets. So one target, still not great volume, still not somebody you can start. You barely want him on your roster in most leagues, but that usage from 19% of the routes to right here, 19%, 73%. That's what we wanted to see. And we saw it not by week four. We saw it as soon as week two. So then my question was coming into Thursday night football in a short week, will he still see usage? Again, this is an injured player on a short week. Or are they just going to limit him? And the answer was kind of, but we saw a good amount of usage still in this game, especially downfield. Mike Williams had a contested catch in this game, which is kind of his thing. He had four total targets. So again, came into this game with one through three games. Then he gets, or one through two, then he gets four, three catches for 34 yards. And here's the thing. You look at his overall usage, 55% of the routes. Now this is encouraging to me. It was 73%, but again, this was a short week for a player dealing with an injury as an older player they wanted to ramp up it makes sense that he saw less overall usage especially in a game where they were basically blowing out the Patriots the entire time the Patriots could do nothing on offense 18% targets per route run is what we want to see if this number is anywhere near 20 consistently near 20 Mike Williams is somebody who has to be on rosters in my opinion in all 12 team leagues or more because this is a Jets offense right now that yes Garrett Wilson is the clear one number one receiver Alan Lazard has obviously a connection dating back to the Packers with Aaron Rodgers but if Mike Williams who they paid 10, 10, 10 million dollars this offseason to be a part of this offense if he starts consistently playing 70 plus percent of the routes if he starts consistently seeing close to 20 percent of the targets that's going to pay off especially if this Jets offensive line continues to protect Aaron Rodgers so well like it has the last two weeks and just as a reminder this was a guy in Mike Williams who if you date if you look back over his last three seasons 13th overall wide receiver finish 20th he gets hurt last year but he was already averaging for the first couple of games of the season a top 10 overall performance so if he can get back to anywhere near this and I'm not saying he's going to be a top 20 receiver but even if he's a top 40 top 36 that's somebody who's a flex option for you shouldn't be out there on what 70 80 percent of fantasy league waiver wires and it could be as soon as this week where we see some interesting usage for him because they'll have a whole mini buy 10 days to rest off of that acl and they're going to face the denver broncos at home and that's important because the denver broncos have patrick sertan who's most definitely going to be all over in my opinion in this game one garrett wilson we've seen him shut down the last three wide receivers he's faced and george pickens this most recent week mike evans dk mech have to start the season so i think this could be a spot where we see mike evans have less attention or Mike Williams have less attention on him, maybe get some one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside with Aaron Rodgers throwing him the ball. So that's a guy who's interesting, kind of a veteran. Now, a younger player, still just 24 years old, who's interesting, and maybe the number one receiver for his team the next few weeks. And I say maybe, and a lot of emphasis on that, is Tutu Atwell of the Los Angeles Rams, because here's the deal. He stood out in week three. And how did he stand out? Well, he had a nice performance. Five targets, 13 and a half fantasy points, puts up 93 yards on just four catches. This is kind of his game, a speedster downfield who can create those big plays. And he came into this game without Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua. We didn't know where the wide receiver targets would go. Demarcus Robinson, Tyler Johnson, kind of dusty players. Would they really be getting all the usage? Well, at least in this game, that wasn't the case. It was Atwell who goes out there and in his first game is seeing an expanded role, runs 80% of the routes, sees 22% of the targets, which I believe led this team or was tied for the team high. And here's the thing, like Jordan Winham, a rookie out of Texas, a late round pick was getting some hype. He only runs 40% of the routes. Half the role that Atwell saw, saw 13% of the targets. I don't think Tutu Atwell is going anywhere because he's the one guy on this offense that can actually create on his own thanks to his downfield speed. And you can see that speed right here he runs a 4 4 4 40 time he was actually probably faster than this if you just if you look at some of his gps tracking times from as recent as this past week so he kind of stands out compared to some of the other guys here and a demarcus robinson not known for his speed Tyler Johnson, not known for his speed, a short area around the line of scrimmage guy. Jordan Winningham, it's kind of yet to be seen what his role will look like in the NFL. Will he win at the line of scrimmage? Can he win downfield? But we don't have to ask those questions about Tutu, who's paired up, paired up with Matthew Stafford, and they're finally starting to get some offensive linemen back. At least for the next few weeks, we might see Tutu Atwell operate as this downfield number one option until Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup return. And there's some good matchups in there. Like, I won't lie, this week they're going to go on the road against the Bears. That's not a good matchup. But then at home against the Packers, you can get yours against that Packers defense. It has been opportunistic in terms of picking off uh, quarterbacks and getting interceptions right now the Packers defense but they'll give up yards at home against the Raiders like those are some nice matchups where we might not still and probably shouldn't still have uh, Puka Nakua and might not even have Cup in those games for what it's worth last year to start the season we had a nice 2-2 outing -two -two you can see right here 18 fantasy points 15 fantasy points 17 fantasy points then he ends up getting hurt and basically losing his job to Demarcus Robinson but this was a guy that was putting up 119 70 50 yards and a touchdown in those weeks this is a guy who can be productive when he gets opportunities and here's a tweet right here from Jake JK Bogan on Twitter again this is a pretty long tweet a lot here but basically all he's saying is anytime that two two has been targeted more than once in a game so more than just once in a game this is what he's done five catches for 50 yards six catches 119 seven for 77 four for 50 three for 30 or three for 76 four for 93 
So basically almost every single time, except maybe one that he's been targeted more than once in a game, he's putting up at least 10 fantasy points for you. And a lot of weeks, 15 plus, you should be adding him. You should also consider adding Jalen Tolbert, although he's not as much of a priority. He was in this video last week, but he had another nice game. He had another nice game. And this was a game where the Dallas Cowboys had to throw a lot as they trailed by multiple scores, basically all game against the Baltimore Ravens. And you can see right here, he gets another touchdown back to back weeks. Now he gets five targets in this game. He puts up 13 fantasy points. This is again, back to back weeks where Jalen Tolbert for you is a flex play, a wide receiver, two or three in your lineup and paying off. And then you look at his usage and it was nice usage. The problem is there's just so many receivers used here. Obviously, CeeDee Lamb and Brandon Cooks are still going to be operating on this team as top options, at least in terms of snaps and routes run. Then there was Jalen Tolbert, but we also saw, look at all these other guys, Jalen Brooks, uh, Kevante Turpin. These guys are combining for five targets. So Tur Tur Tolbert seeing five targets on his own, making another touchdown grab, looking good out there. That's nice to see, but they're literally rotating five wide receivers right now. So that kind of limits his upside. It also limits his upside because Jake Ferguson returned in this game, saw 11 targets after seeing a nice roll in week one before injury, turns these 11 targets into six catches for 95 yards, 15 and a half fantasy points. He's the clear number two option behind CeeDee Lamb in this passing attack. So now Jalen Tolbert last week was like, okay, maybe the number two option on this team since Brandon Cooks hasn't looked as good. Now with Ferguson back, clear number three at best. I will say I'd rather have Tolbert over Brandon Cooks still in this upcoming week. It's a short week on Thursday night football on the road against the New York Giants. But here's the thing. This is a great matchup. The Giants right now have a bottom 10 secondary. This is one that you can pick apart. Another spot that if you're in a 12 team league or deeper and you're hurting from some injuries, I do think you can flex Jalen Tolbert this week, although he's not the best of options. I'd rather have some other guys we've already talked about in this video. Now, if you're not familiar with Tolbert, he is a third year player. It took him a long time because he came from a small program, South Alabama, a smaller program in college. He kind of struggled to adapt to the NFL. He's admitted that in some podcasts. So season one wasn't good as a rookie. Year two last year, he started to come on. He ran a 4-4-9 40 time at the combine. So he has speed. If you date back to his production in college, 32% target share, 33% target share. This is great production. And you go down here, 1,400 receiving yards is the big one. His final year of college. He then brings that into last year, trending up, uh, up nicely like we discussed. And now so far this year, he's year three. He's really starting to break out. So Tolbert is somebody to add, and so is Quentin Johnson. But like I have some reservations about Tolbert's consistency and being able to do that now with Jake Ferguson back, I do have some questions about one Quentin Johnson as well. Like he did score another touchdown this week. He now has touchdowns, I believe, in every single game this year. He had multiple touchdowns last week, but he only had two targets. One of them was a broken play touchdown. So outside of that, in a game where the Chargers just don't throw a lot in a tough matchup against the Steelers does get you 12 and a half fantasy points, but it's not like the usage was great in this game because at least based on the overall usage, it looks like Glad McConkey now for basically the second week out of three games has by far the best target share on this team. Just two or three targets, depending on where you're looking for Quentin Johnson. Glad McConkey double that, double them more than anybody else on the team with six. McConkey sees over a 30% target share for the second time this season. Last week, it was Quentin Johnson seeing a 32% target share, though I should point that out. But how consistent can he do be with these performances? Because it's also worth noting that Justin Herbert re injured his foot, or actually, it's his high ankle sprain that he had coming into the game he was seen wearing a boot in the locker room also Josh Palmer a veteran receiver missed last week he should be back coming into week four and here's the thing on one Justin Herbert Herbert re-injured his high ankle sprain it looks like based on the um, reports coming back that it wasn't no, no fracture his MRI or his his, uh, his MRI came back fine or his x-rays came back fine so there's no fracture in there so it's still stable and it looks like according to Deepak right now on Twitter sports MD analysis he thinks that he leans towards him playing in week four now if this was a wide receiver or running back there's no way Justin Herbert's playing. But he's a quarterback. It's going to affect his mobility for sure, but he should still be fine to deliver passes in the short to intermediate and somewhat deep parts of the field. But the problem for Quentin Johnson is that this is a run first offense. And now the team is incentivized even more to run the ball if Justin Herbert's going to be playing through an injury, where it looks like Lad McConkey out of the slot could get even more targets if Herbert can't throw downfield as much. And he's already seeing a lot of targets, McConkey. And like I said, Palmer should be coming back this week. We'll see what happens after this week because then you're going to get one DJ Shark eligible to come off IR as well. So again, Quentin Johnson, former first round pick, he's playing great this is as good as it could possibly be in terms of scoring touchdowns and producing this early in the season I just don't know how sticky the performances will be moving forward now before we keep going and I want to talk about the Philadelphia receiver core because man oh man they're dealing with injuries over 65 percent of you are not subscribed to this channel just take two seconds to hit that button here on this channel we have an agreement it's called the Sal gentleman's agreement you shake on it right now if you find this video helpful and you're here like two-thirds of the way through the video so you probably do you hit the subscribe button because it helps the channel grow you get something out of it I get something out of it and we all kumbaya together so hit that subscribe button now I want to talk about the Philadelphia receiver core because here's the thing AJ Brown dealing with an injury maybe he returns in week four hamstring could keep him out another week Devonta Smith ended up in this past week getting a concussion so if he goes into the concussion protocol probably missing a week their wide receiver three for the past couple weeks and Britton Covey has a shoulder injury did not return to the game so we're looking at a situation right now where they might be down their top three receivers leaving Jahan Dotson Johnny Wilson a rookie and then also Paris Campbell is on this team as well I mean Jahan Dotson will become the priority ad in this wide receiver room but he hasn't done anything so far this season on his routes run Johnny Wilson is 
a nice big target. If A.J. Brown was out, I'd be more inclined to maybe play Johnny Wilson in a deeper league. But if Brown is back, then it really just looks like Dotson has an ad here. We can go to a division rival from the Eagles to the Giants. And Wandell Robinson once again had a nice game. I mean, this is a guy in Wandell right now. If we look at this as a sort of a quick hitter here, runs 78% of the routes a season high, sees 25% of the targets for the second time this season. In week one, he had a 31% target share. He has a 25% target share this week. So now on the season, 24% of the targets, which is very impressive because Malik Neighbors is balling out, earning it seems like every single target out there for the Giants. But very quietly, 24% of the targets, which is a strong number, are also going to Robinson. They're not downfield targets, so they're not as, as valuable. But if you're getting seven to eight to nine targets a game, Robinson should be on more rosters. He's still available in over 60% of leagues when Neighbors is going to take all that defensive attention away. Now, this next guy I want to talk about, it really depends on the injuries in his wide receiver room. And it's Jalen Naylor of the Minnesota Vikings, who scored a touchdown in all three games. But here's the thing. We have to see what happens with Jordan Addison. He's dealing with a left ankle sprain, also a right ankle sprain from the preseason. Addison right now has not practiced the last two weeks. If Addison is back at practice this week and it looks like he's playing in week four against the Packers, then Naylor's not an option in any league formats. But if Addison continues not to practice and doesn't suit up in week four, then Naylor can be one of these flex options for you. Had 50 yards, a touchdown, three catches this past week. Can be a flex option in deeper leagues, especially if you have multiple flex spots in your league's kind of a scoring and format. Next up, I want to talk about a deep sleeper available in 100% of leagues. I think it's like 99.5%. And that is one Calvin Austin. He is a wide receiver on the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the reason I'm bringing him up is because Van Jefferson left with an eye injury last week. We know George Pickens is the number one receiver on this team. Jefferson's been operating as the number two with Austin in the slot, but Austin had a nice game. He had over 50 yards. He had a 55 yard touchdown catch and run. Real, looked really good on that one. And this is a guy that based on his college profile should kind of see more opportunities in the NFL. Just hasn't clicked yet. He put up over a thousand yards his final two years of college, including 28% target shares in each of those. Also went to the NFL combine and looked like an NFL standout there. Look at his uh, metrics according to player profiler. The higher these are, the better. 4-3-2 speed. We saw that on his 55 yard touchdown run. The bursts we saw as well. 95th percentile, 96th percentile agility. Available in 99% of leagues. The Steelers team is not going to throw a lot, but he is a talented player with maybe more opportunities if Jefferson is forced to miss time. And then I want to bring up a first round pick from this year's draft class, the last pick in the first round, and that's Xavier Leggett because this right here. First off, Andy Dalton in this offense looked a lot better, over 300 yards passing, multiple passing touchdowns. Deontay Johnson got there, Chuba Hubbard got there, Adam Thielen got there with a touchdown, but Adam Thielen got hurt in that game, and he's 34 years old, and now he suffered a hamstring injury. Normally, this is a two week recovery time for wide receivers, maybe even more for an older wide receiver, and that's why one Xavier Leggett, who's 221 pounds, not only 221 pounds, runs a 4-3. This dude is a freak. He's a freak both at the catch point and after the catch based on his college career, especially last season. So if you can get Xavier Leggett, who's available right now in 95% of leagues, and just stash him and see if this Panthers offense is legit moving forward, and if Dylan misses two or three weeks, that's a starting receiver, first round capital, I think there could be some upside here. So these are the wide receivers you should be adding before your friends do and before week four starts. But if you want to see the most important position in fantasy football, the running backs, the guys you should be adding there, I talk about seven of them in this video right here. And as I always say, YouTube thinks you'll like it. I think you'll like it as well. And it might just be your favorite video of all time. So hit that button. I'll see you on the next one. Kapish, kapash. Bada bing, bada bang. Peace out.